So we're gonna kick it off with our first patient. And this is an 11 year old girl who presents with a mass on her leg. So after appropriate initial workup, Emily, what would be your surgical approach? An incisional biopsy or an image guided cord needle biopsy is usually recommended um, and should take into account the location of the tumor and its relationship to important neurovascular structures. In some situations, the minority of situations, a small superficial tumor may undergo primary excision provided that negative margins can be achieved and that limb function will not be compromised. All other tumors should undergo biopsy with a plan for neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And with any biopsy, careful planning of the biopsy tract is required as this tract should be incorporated to any attempts at subsequent resection. An incorrect, poorly planned biopsy may unnecessarily contaminate uninvolved compartments and compromise local control, the likelihood of limb salvage, and sometimes overall outcome. Um, likewise, a core needle biopsy to take into account the eventual scope of resection. Moreover, given the generally smaller samples of tissues obtained with a core needle biopsy, care should be taken to obtain a sufficient quantity of tissue for both histology and molecular genetics and multiple large caliber cores verified by real-time involvement of a pathologist um, to ensure adequate viable tissue for complete assessment of biological markers is recommended. In this patient, an open biopsy was performed and it demonstrated fusion positive rhabdomyosarcoma. She next underwent an FDG PET CT, which did not show any enlarged or avid regional lymph nodes. So at this point, what is your management of her regional nodal status? Nodal involvement occurs in nearly a quarter of patients with rhabdomyosarcoma and is most common in fusion positive patients with patient, in patients with tumors greater than five centimeters of size, with those with extremity or trunk tumors, and in those um, with paratesticular tumors who are older than 10 years of age. Although the current COG protocols currently recommend cross-sectional imaging and FTG-PET to help to detect both distant metastatic and local regional nodal disease uh, with lymph nodes greater than one centimeter in short access on standard cross-sectional imaging or those with PET SUV maxes greater than two and a half times baseline suggesting nodal involvement, both the sensitivity and the specificity of PET for nodal metastasis is less than sentinel lymph node biopsy. For uh, extremity and other sites, imaging may fail to detect nodal disease in approximately half of cases and in other instances may demonstrate false positivity. So regardless of what the imaging shows, uh, patients with extremity rhabdomyosarcomas should have a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And a sentinel lymph node biopsy is more accurate than random lymph node sampling. There is no clinical benefit to completion nodal dissection for patients found to have positive sentinel nodes as nodal patients, which are found to be positive, will uh, receive radiation therapy. While several methods of sentinel lymph, lymph node biopsy have been described, we've historically uh, preferred the dual use of technician 99M and blue dye, either isosulfan blue known by the brand name lymphazurin or methylene blue. Technician 99 is typically injected in nuclear medicine in the tumor about two to four hours prior to the planned biopsy. It's typically injected in four quadrants around the tumor. Follow-up lymphocentrography is then used to identify the drainal nodal basin or basins. And then intraoperatively, two to three millimeters, uh, milliliters of blue dye should be injected at the beginning of the procedure employing the same four quadrant technique that is used for the technician injection. A handheld gamma probe can be used to identify the area of maximal counts to help guide dissection and nodal identification. And visually identifying blue nodes also guides the identification and their removal. Several studies have demonstrated that simultaneous use of both technician and blue dye improves the success rate of central node biopsy by providing the surgeon with both auditory and visual clues for the lymph nodes. All lymph nodes in the nodal basin with counts greater than 10%, that of the first identified lymph node should be removed. Additionally, there's a lot of recent enthusiasm for the use of endocyanin green or ICG, either as a single agent for sentinel lymph node detection or in combination with another tracer agent. ICG is a water-soluble green dye with near-infrared fluorescent properties, which binds to plasma proteins and then tracks to the lymph 
of vascular system. And through a laser-assisted imaging device, a central node mapping can per be performed intraoperatively after a dermal injection of ICG in the same four-quadrant technique concurrent with uh, real-time lymphangiography. This is still being actively investigated in children, but studies in a variety of adult tumors have demonstrated excellent sensitivity and specificity using ICG with equivalent or superior results to other methods of sentinel lymph node detection. This innovative surgeon did a sentinel node biopsy with ICG and the sentinel node returned as positive. So how would the patient be staged and treated at this point? So if the remainder of the workup is negative for metastatic disease, um, the patient's classified as stage three because this is an unfavorable site with node positive disease, group three because the primary um, uh, treatment was an upfront biopsy and not resection and fusion positive. In aggregate, this is, uh, amounts to an intermediate risk rhabdomyosarcoma and this patient will be treated on an intermediate risk pathway with uh, VAC VI plus or minus temsurum limus for 42 weeks of therapy. The patient undergoes four cycles of chemotherapy and then repeat imaging is performed. They find that the mass has decreased in size and there now appears to be a margin between the major neurovascular structures. What is your recommendation at this point for local control, Emily? If it appears that uh, complete resection is possible without compromising function or resulting in significant anatomic distortion, a delayed primary excision can be performed. Um, a delayed primary excision with negative margins allows the reduction of RT to 36 gray, while that a delayed primary excision with microscopic margins allows reduction to 41.4 gray. If on re-imaging it appears that um, delayed primary excision would not be possible with negative margins, there's no role for debulking. This patient in that case would receive uh, a, uh, a definitive RT with 50.4 gray. Um, and in patients who do receive definitive RT, there is no role for the, an excision of residual mass at the end of planned therapy. As these excisions frequently fail to find viable tumor, they're incomplete and they engender significant morbidity.